Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr, and this is episode 168, and it's The Island, part 13. And here we go. Morgan came back with Gwen, Aoife, and Care soon after. The night had fully fallen. They came, Mother, Tristan said to Gwen. Duncan pointed out where we were, and they came and tried to take Aaron by force. We stopped them. Aoife was looking at Aaron's wounds. Carden was cleaning Tristan's cut. As she asked no questions, Carden understood that Gwen had filled her in on Aaron's previous injuries. He should live, Aaron sa- Aoife said. He needs to recover, though. I'm not sure that's possible, Gwen said. They were willing to come and take him by force. Two held off three, but next time they may bring many boats and carry him off. I'm thinking we have no real choice but to take him away and chance that he's strong enough to survive the journey. Off the island, Eve asked. Gwen nodded. My family could hide him, Eve offered. Carden shook his head. Whether we're here or not, if Aaron's not here when they return, they will search the entirety of the island. I'm sure of it. I think Gwen's right. Only if we get him away from the island completely might he be safe. And I don't know how angry they will be about the wounds they suffered tonight, but I don't want to chance any of our family being here when they return. The only question is, do we all leave right now and not plan on returning? Or do you say Tristan and I take Aaron down the coast, find some place far away for him to recover, and then return? Aaron's told us that we're all in danger from protecting him, Gwen said. I always believed him, but I don't think I understood the depth of the danger. Now I do. We all must leave. Tonight. Everyone went silent. How can we help? Eve asked. We will take everything we can, Carden said, but some of the larger fishing equipment, particularly the nets, it won't fit in the boat with all of us. I hate to leave it here. If they have any spite in them, they might destroy them. I can have some of my family come and take anything away you can't carry, Eva said. We will come by just before dawn. Will you be gone by then? Long gone, Carden said. Hide it for a while, Gwen suggested. If we're not able to return, feel free to use it. I hope it won't come to that, Eva said. They all worked that night. The boat wasn't really all that large, and with three adults, two teens, and a child to load on, plus their belongings, it was going to be full. Even fuller, since Aaron would have to recline or simply lie down rather than sit. Sometime shortly after midnight, they pushed off. The sea was calm, and the tide was still fairly high, which made for an easy launch. Having discussed it beforehand, they made north. If they'd gone south, it would have been around the end of the island that led to town. Unlikely as it might be to meet a party of potentials heading their way, it was better to avoid all danger. Besides, even if they didn't meet anyone, a sighting from a distance on a night which was clear could give a hint as to their location. After all, they could not cross the sea. They could only go up or down the coast. There was a town which they figured they could reach in a few days. This would be when they'd have to put in, as they only had enough water for that journey. Food they were better off on. If they had to, they could put in at a stream and continue on. But three days of paddling and rowing should be enough to get to the next real city. They had some money, as did Aaron. They could scout around. They would have to put Aaron someplace comfortable to heal, not in any illusions that he would get much better on an open boat. They were fortunate in that Though they had no sails, they could make good progress just from the current, which moved up the coast. They stayed within sight of the shoreline, not wanting to accidentally get away from land and then losing time getting back. Everyone but Kier and Aaron took turns at the oars. Everyone, when resting, kept an eye on their patient. Kier dropped a line off the back and fished, and even caught a few. After carefully checking them, Cardin even had the family eat some raw though he kept it away from Aaron, who could not chance it. They had not brought salt in quantity, nor was there any way to sun-dry the meat properly. The second day, they saw a pod of dolphins. They jumped a few times near the little boat, but didn't stay long. They chose to take this as a good sign. The afternoon of the third day, arms aching, 
and even their very tanned skins burning from too much sun, they saw the new town roll into view. Too exhausted to try anything clever, and with Aaron mostly incoherent, they pulled into one of the large public docks, tied up, paid the dock keeper, and went to find a room. They put Aaron on the bed and enjoyed the shade of the room. After a discussion, Gwen and Morgan went to buy groceries and also to look for any sign of attentions. If they went back to the island that night and sent out word by horse, they may have reached here ahead of us. Aaron, myself, and Tristan would be the best known of us to them, so it would be safest for you to go. Gwen had agreed with this, and they spent a good long time getting supplies and also taking a good long look around. It was getting late when they returned. Tristan had clearly become agitated, and Cardin suspected that Tristan thought they might have been lost or even abducted. No pretensions, Gwen said. We even asked around a bit. No one knows any or even knows about them. Good news, Cardin said. I was afraid they'd have a lot of power here as well. That gives us leeway. They watched their money closely. Aaron had them use his money as well once he'd begun to recover. They couldn't really keep up, but Cardin did as much fishing as he could, and they sold a fair bit on market days, though their ability to keep the fish fresh or properly preserve it was limited. Still, they stretched their money. Cardin also chatted up a woodworker, which gave him an idea. It was several weeks now, and Aaron was actually healing. The whole family was tired of being cooped up in the rented room. Cardin had started making a small sale for the boat, bit by bit, as his, at his woodworking friend's shop, paying what he could. It was now finished. It wasn't the most efficient sale ever made, but it worked. They had even put a small keel on the bottom of the hull. He tested it by sailing several short runs out to sea. I think, Cardin said, I should go back down the coast. The sail should let me do so, even against the current, easily. It wasn't ever needed back home, but I'll be glad to have it here, and the journey back should be swift. Yes, Gwen said. Let us know how things are. And that's the episode for this week. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com, or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for listening. Words Music Copyright 2020 Cryptobiography LLC All Rights Reserved Characters and Events are fictional, fictionalized, or satirical. <laughs>